guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and coming back. I appreciate it and hope you're doing well wherever you are. Today I'm gonna to talk about saving a sunset photo. So we've all been places and you take a photo of a sunset and it's just not that great of a photo. Um, you know, maybe the colors don't look that great in the photo. Uh, maybe the colors actually weren't that great. Uh, you know, maybe you're kind of fired up about where you are, like emotionally you're invested in the scene and you're excited about it because it's beautiful. Maybe you're in Italy, which is what I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, but the sunset's just kind of uninspired, and so you're looking to maybe give it a kick or give it some life. Now, I did a video a few, I don't know, a few weeks ago uh, called The Five Filters to Use on Every Single Sunset, and, and I use those a lot, but this sunset's different. Um, I used some of those filters, but I also added a couple layers. I added a preset. Um, I did some masking to sort of identify uh, not identify, isolate some colors and sort of control them better. So I did a lot of different things. So let me show you what I started with. So let me get that here and boom, there you go. So this is the original photo. This is the beach in Positano, Italy. I took this a couple of years ago when we were there. Stunning location. And if you look here, you can see there's some nice orange and yellow that's kind of sort of poking through, for lack of a better word. But it's, it's very kind of blue and somewhat tame. And the truth is, I just wanted to make it a bit more exciting, so I made it look like that. Now that's vastly different, and admittedly the sunset didn't really look like that. I mean, obviously the colors were there. I didn't create colors that didn't exist as much as I just really used some of the filters to bring out some of the hidden colors, for lack of a better word. And I did some other changes, so we'll dive into that here, and uh, I'll walk you through it. So let me pull up uh, my different layers and my filters and get them ready to go, and then I'll walk through the editing process, so I'll be right back. Hang on a second. Okay, thanks for waiting, I appreciate that. So here we go, I've got a number of different layers and I'm on the base layer, and what I have so far is the develop filter. And it only says uh, develop because I didn't use a raw file, simply because I generally use JPEGs for my videos unless I'm specifically talking about the raw develop filter. That's why, otherwise in my real editing, uh, I'd either use a raw file directly in Luminar or I send a TIFF file from Lightroom over to Luminar. So anyway, that's why I'm in the develop filter. A couple of things I did here. You can see I, I upped the temperature and the tint a little bit. As you saw in the original, which I can show you, there's that. It was a little dark. This was a um, single exposure from a set of brackets. I pretty much always fire brackets. And anyway, fairly bluish, uh, dark but I liked this one better than the brighter exposure and I didn't want to make an HDR. So this is where the raw develop filter got me. You can see it's kind of bringing the photo back to life, which is why I often start with the develop filter. Um, you know what, and there's the histogram. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And by the way, shot at F8. I'm gonna close that because I don't really care. I'll keep the layers panel open. Um, the other thing I did, as you can see, is I bumped up the exposure and the contrast, and then I lifted the shadows, added a little bit of clarity. Again, just went from a fairly flat photo to something that, to me, is starting to show signs of life. I can see uh, better in the sky, right? So pretty much all blue. Now everything's a bit warmer, partly because of the temperature change that I did. And also I think lifting the exposure helped uh, get rid of some of that blue, if you will. So that's where I am. And then the next few steps are really where I start getting into the managing the light and bumping up that color quite a bit. So I start with adjustable gradient, and you can see uh, nothing happened on the top. You can see they're all at zero, but if you click over here to the bottom, I did a few things, and to show you the before and after again, there's the before, fairly dark, too dark for my taste in the foreground. I wanted to brighten that to sort of balance the light. So I bumped the exposure up, drop contrast a tiny bit, and just add a little bit of vibrance and warmth. So pretty simple, straightforward, really all about the bottom of the photo. And the truth is I didn't change the orientation. I actually shot this with the horizon in the center. You know, there'll be people that tell you never to center the horizon. I don't really care, it's what I wanted to shoot. So I shot it the way I wanted to shoot it. Um, and I wanted to have a lot of that sky, but I wanted to get a little bit of beach because I like the line of the sand. I like the line of the rope going out to those boats. I like the dock and the little bit of hill or mountain coming in. And so the way I shot it is the way I shot it. So that's something I, I admit to, and that is, you know, you it, it's important, I guess, to learn the, the rules of composition, but break them any chance you, you get or whenever you want to, because it's your photo. You might as well make it look the way you want it to look, right? So um, saturation and vibrance. <laughs> Last video, I, I called it saturation and violence. 
uh, or maybe two videos ago and everybody got a laugh out of that. So saturation and vibrance, again, just a simple color boost to both saturation and vibrance. The difference being saturation kind of saturates everything. Vibrance sort of gives a bump to the colors that aren't the dominant colors in the scene. So um, if you can look at the before and after, before kind of lameish, for lack of a better word, kind of colorless. And now with a little saturation and vibrance bump, starting to get a little bit more color. And I like that, I think it's looking nice. Uh, then I went to brilliance and warmth. Um, I, I love that filter. Um, I just went with warmth, so a tiny bit of vividness, not a lot, again, just a little bit of a bump, just a good filter to use. And then I went to golden hour. And I think you'll see that made a fairly substantial impact, most notably in the sky. It's really bringing some of that color up, which I love. Uh, I wanted to accentuate the look of the sunset and kind of, for lack of a better word, save this photo and make it a more interesting looking and more colorful and beautiful sunset. So Golden Hour helped her really bring that to life. Uh, and then my favorite filter, as you know, which is color balance. And there we go. I did a very slight job, you know, with my street scenes, uh, the cityscapes like I've done in a couple of recent videos, I'll move the colors around a lot with color balance. But when I've already got some color there that you saw it coming back with the saturation and vibrance, the brilliance and warmth and the golden hour. So I didn't want to go crazy. I'm not completely trying to, um, you know, I'm not trying to go crazy, I guess. So um, shadows, I did nothing. Midtones, I did nothing. So it was really highlights, and all it did is bump the cyan uh, more to the red, just to give a little bit more of that color in the highlights. Again, that's mostly in the sky. So let me turn that off. You can see it's a little bit less reddish orange, and now a little bit more reddish orange. It actually brings up a little bit of kind of purple uh, tint, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, a, it's my favorite color, but B, when there's purplish kind of colors going on in the sky, I just love that. Um, and then the last uh, filter on this layer is just denoise. I simply wanted to just clean up the sky a little bit. So I just, as you can see here, I just bumped up the, uh, the sliders and then I painted it into the sky. And already I think I've got a much better looking photo. You know, again, better is a subjective term. You might think, hey Jim, it was kind of blue. It looked like a blue hour photo, it looked nice. Um, and I made it look like more of a sunset photo. It was sunset. You can see the sun still in the sky, but it just was, it was too, uh, too boring for my taste. So I made it a lot more exciting. So that's using a number of filters, some of which were in my uh, previous video a few weeks back about, you know, um, five filters to use on every sunset. Um, but the next thing I did is I wanted to um, add a preset. And so I went over here and I grabbed a preset. Now let me show you the preset. This is one of my custom presets. It's in my category called A Movable Feast. You can get that on my blog. There's a link down below in the video description. Um, it sells for $7, I think. But anyway, it's like 20 or 30, I just can't remember. I got a number of preset packs. But anyway, um, I think it sells for $7. It's 25 or so presets. The one I used was this Sunset on the Sane. As you can see, I just went to 35 um, and so it's got a number of different filters and I won't walk through all of these, but let me just turn off this layer. There's, uh, give that a second. There's the before. Nope, sorry, that's the after. <laughs> Hello. Um, there's the before. That's what I had on my base layer and I liked it. I just wanted a kind of a little bit of, I don't know what to call it other than an oomph, right? I just wanted a little kick in the pants for the photo and the color. And that was a preset and I was, I turned it on, you can see, boom, it gave it a bit of color pop. Um, a number of different filters built into my presets. And if you have my presets, number one, thank you. But number two, you'll know that I'm generally including a lot of filters in each preset because I like to make kind of big shifts. So um, I won't go through all of these, but I will look at the filters amount. As I told you, I went to 35 here. That's what it would have been at 100 over the top, saturated, it looks like the clown vomit thing that we've talked about before. Um, and so when you first click on the presets, sometimes it, you're just kind of like, oh, my eyes, you know, but um, that's why I like this slider here um, or, you know, in the preset window. And I'm going to get that back to 35. And my preset gave it a nice little color bump without going over the top. So that was uh, getting me where I am now. And again, there's the before and there's the after. So in looking at it, I think, you know, I really like it, but there's a few things I don't really like. Number one, um, and this is me saying this, and you know I love color, but 
it's a little too saturated but there's a difference like for me like there's too much blue there i don't i just don't think that looks natural that reminds me of the way i would edit photos like five years ago or something where I, you know like the more saturation the better just pour it on you know go slide those sliders to the right um and i still do that sometimes i'll admit but i'm trying to control myself um so what i did is i did a layer and i call this layer color masking and so let me show you what i did here i came in and the first thing i did let me turn this layer on um but i've got all the filters off the first thing i did is i went and reduced the saturation and the vibrance fairly substantially in the lower half of the frame and so you can see that that blue has been sort of tamed or tamped down a little bit let me show you the um the before of that filter um if you look at the bottom half of the photo so it's really just the water and the sand a little too much gold you know coming in the sand too much blue there it doesn't look crazy over the top but again it's it's too much for my taste so that's what this um this filter was for saturation and vibrance and i masked it in i took uh, both of them down and masked it into the bottom and then you know you probably know you can do this but i use the same filter again saturation and vibrance because i wanted to do that for the sky and reduce them very very slightly so all i did is just basically did the reverse i added saturation and vibrance again i took them both down just a slight amount and then i masked that edit into the sky so use the same filter twice on the same you know back to back on the same layer with different masks and that's the beauty of filter masking in luminar just love that stuff and then the last thing i did is just the green over here and the saturation level kind of in that um uh, mountain or hill or whatever you want to call it it's just a little too distracting so i came over here i took the yellows and greens down and then i think i took yeah i took the luminance of the green down as well i just wanted to make that section of the photo a little tamer a little less distracting so um i did those edits let me show you the before you can see it's kind of brighter a little bit more green and after it's going to be a little darker i took down the colors you know a little less saturated a little bit darker to me it was a little bit of a visual distraction and i don't really care about that i like the line of that hill um, being on the edge of the photo in some ways the line coming in like that it sort of mirrors the sand and how that the line of the sand is coming across um, kind of like a a triangle or an angle shape they kind of mirror each other which i like and then you have the dock over there and that uh, rope going out to that boat i like both of those things i think they look cool i like lines in photos um, because it sort of directs your eye but that one was a little too distracting so i just did a minor edit there and in fact you might would go in and, and drop the luminance um uh, let's see if the orange and yellow does anything yeah so that kind of takes that down as well Maybe that does a little bit more to the photo for you. I don't know. Um, I'm all about experimenting, so do whatever works for you. It's just visually for me. Let me show you the before. Uh, give that a second. There you go. Everything's brighter, and I don't really care. That's not a focal point for me. I'm more about the sky and the color and sort of the composition or the lines. And so doing the edits with the HSL just to that mountain makes it to me a little cleaner and a little less visually distracting because to me the the sky is the star of the show here so that's that and the last thing is i did an erase uh image uh layer and basically i just used went into the tools menu i grabbed the eraser tool and what i did is there are two little boats right on the edge of my frame and they were driving me nuts let me show you let me turn it off if you look right here in the far left you're going to see that there are two little boats and all i did is i went in with the brush and just erased them and uh, they went away I like that perfect uh, and i gotta say the erase tool in luminar is better now than it was in the first version i used to get little artifacts here and there and frankly i did more of my erasing in lightroom uh you know in the previous version a year ago uh the new uh, newer version that's been out since the fall so it's been out five or six months now i think much better and it did a great job i mean the the horizon line is perfectly straight the colors look great there's no artifacts you can't even tell and that's how it should be uh, so i love that and and that's really my photo so let me show you the before and after there's the before blue kind of a uh, colorless um almost kind of lifeless in some ways with a few distracting uh things like those little boats on the edge of the frame and after you know now i look at it i might think yeah it's a maybe a little too 
saturated you know you could add another layer and and reduce the saturation across the entire thing if you want it so just plus add new layer get a filter get saturation and vibrance and you know do something like that where you take it down just a little bit because maybe you like the color maybe it was too much so now let me show you what that looks like um, there's the before layer and here's the after I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I like it both ways. I'm a fan of color, so you know you choose what you want. The other thing is what I often consider like finishing touch would be like an Orton effect or an image radiance, where I just come in and slap some of that, you know, sort of moodiness, for lack of a better word. I might have to use a little saturation. I might actually do a little bit of blue, and I'm kind of winging it here, making this up, folks. So I don't know how this is going to look, um, and then maybe a tiny bit of brightness. Um, it just gives gives a little bit of that romantic glow. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. It's 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 your call. Well, it's my call, I guess, is my photo. But uh, anyway, um, that's something else you can do. The point is, um, I do all my edits, and sometimes I'll stack them on multiple layers. But don't hesitate to save it as a Luminar file. Come back to it later, because whenever I come back with fresh eyes, I find different things that I like and or dislike about a photo. And so I might come back and do some of these kind of things like adding this image radiance. I think I, 40 was too much. I think 30 looks a little bit better. And maybe warm that back up. I think going uh, negative 30 on the warmth was probably too much. Maybe it's a little bit better at negative 10. So again, ex experiment. Sorry, I hit the mic. I hope that didn't block out the sound. Block out the sound. Anyway, um, I'm getting loopy now. Um, that's it for today, really. I just wanted to walk through how I saved what I consider a save of a otherwise throwaway sunset photo because the sunset wasn't exciting and I love blue, but it was too blue. Um, and uh, the scene was just lacking in, uh, you know, the distribution of light was terrible. It was too dark and all that. And I turned it into something that I'm, I'm kind of proud of, I like. And so that's how I did it. Multiple layers, presets, some color masking, and uh, some finishing touches. It's all fun. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun, in fact. So that's it for today, my friends. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, share with your friends, leave a comment, let me know what you think about it. And I'll be back as soon as I can with another video. Hope you're doing well. Have a great day, and I'll see you later, and adios.